What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the first 4G LTE tablet to be offered by AT&T. This is the HTC built Jetstream. Let's go ahead and give it a full review and see if it can take off. No? All right, so let me go ahead and run through the specs of this guy because it does pack quite a wallop. So it's got a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor. So that's 1.5 on each core. Uh, extremely capable processor. It's Qualcomm built in case you're wondering. Android 3.1 Honeycomb with HTC Sense sitting on top. We're gonna talk a lot about that later. 32 gigs of internal storage, not expandable. Uh, you've got a gig of RAM in there to make sure this thing hums along. 10.1 inch, and it's always measured diagonal screen, the resolution of 1280 by 800. As I mentioned, full 4G LTE support with HSPA plus fallback, so you are getting two uh, 4G technologies. You've got sealed in its metal back here, a 7300 milliamp hour battery, which is extremely capable of easily getting you through uh, one, two, three days of heavy usage, depending on how much you do. Uh, if you use this tablet quite a bit, you'll easily uh, be able to get through a full day. Something you can get to a charger at night, uh, you won't have any difficulty. Uh, it's got, as long as I go ahead and flip this guy back over again, uh, it's got a 8 megapixel camera uh, with a dual LED flash that can shoot full 1080p video at 30 frames per second. And on the front, it's also rocking a 1.3 megapixel camera. So a lot of cameras, and of course you can see that accelerometer uh, rotating as I try and demonstrate the tablet. Uh, it weighs 1.56 pounds, so it's really not the lightest tablet uh, available on the market. Uh, it's got support for HTC's Scribe Pen, uh, which I'll talk about a bit more as we get through the full review. Uh, one thing to definitely know about this tablet, however, is the price. This is going to set you back $699 with a two-year contract. If you want to buy it without a contract, it's going to run you $849. Uh, and you heard me correctly, I didn't misspeak. As of this filming, which is the 1st of November, it is $699 with contract, $849 without contract. Presumably that price is going to plummet, but that's what this tablet costs right now. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about what this thing can do. Uh, let's start with HTC Sense. If you've ever used Sense on an Android device, it should be a very familiar experience with, uh, for you. If you're not familiar with Sense, essentially it's a skin that sits on top of the Android operating system. In this case, HTC made it, who manufactured this tablet. So let's go ahead and talk about scenes. I'll go ahead and hit that icon, hit the wrong button, that icon right there will show us what scenes are. Uh, what scenes are going to do, they're going to give you unique app and widget configurations depending on what scene you're in. So if you're looking at social, for example, it'll pull in all your social information and it'll completely readjust for what it's doing. So let me show you. So you can see what it looks like now. I'm going to go ahead and jump on in to social. And let's see what it does. Gives it a second to load up, putting that gig of RAM to use and looks a little bit different. So you've got all your uh, friend stream information right here. All those widgets for your friends are all set up. Calendar, everything you need to get all social. Of course, you can customize uh, all this goodness. So go ahead and jump on back. Let's go to, I like the HTC one. So we'll leave that there while we do the demonstration. This goes to show you some of the customization uh, that you can do with HTC Sense. And you can do a lot of fun stuff uh, that goes on top of the Honeycomb operating system. Uh, and HTC has done a lot of customization as well. Uh, one of the things I noticed right away was the improved taskbar here at the bottom. Uh, the icons are different than stock Honeycomb. For instance, the home button looks like a house. It's much more clear. Back button looks like a back arrow. Uh, at least for me, it was much clearer to, uh, to see and use. So that was very welcome. Uh, and I was actually quite happy to, uh, to have that. Uh, you've also got that new pen icon, which I'll show you what that is in a minute and the multitasking is still the same, which is awesome. This is one of my favorite things actually about Honeycomb uh, and soon to be ice cream sandwich. I love how they handle multitasking. You pick what you want, you select, and you jump right into it. If I wanna jump into internet, I can go ahead and see what it looks like. And speaking of internet, uh, the internet browser here is awesome. Uh, about what you'd expect from a modern tablet uh, with full flash support. That dual core processor and a gig of RAM uh, and code that was written for dual core works really, really well here. So we are showing flash content. You can see stuff moving there on the right. Uh, and things just hum along very nicely. 
Uh, so if browsing can be what's important to you, you are going to have a great browsing experience here. So more customizations with Sense. You can see search, bookmark, uh, add and tabs. This up here is a bit new. You also have a new redesigned keyboard uh, that HTC has done. I don't particularly care for it. I'd say maybe I'm on the negative one scale if, if one was being great. You can get used to it. If you don't like it, you can always change keyboards. Uh, one of the beauty of Android. That's probably a bit more of a personal preference. So there also are some more uh, differences here on the bottom. The notifications menu has been retweaked a little bit. So go ahead and hit home. Uh, you hit settings, for example, you can see you get some stuff here that you don't have with stock Android. For example, you can toggle right into airplane mode. And the icons are a bit different. So the settings icon doesn't look like standard uh, honeycomb. So go ahead and go home right here. Uh, one of the other things that folks love about Android, me included, are widgets. There are a ton of widget choices um, that come stock with Android, and HTC adds a ton of those. So let me go ahead and show you what some of those are. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. I'll remove that up to the top. Go ahead and hit the home button. And this is where you go ahead and add a widget. So you can see there's an AT&T one there that'll monitor your data if you're on a capped data plan, which you probably will be unless you got some crazy cool plan. Uh, so you've got some standard Android ones and some uh, HTC ones in here as well. So I think I just threw a uh, calculator icon up there. Let's go ahead and jump back and let me show you something interesting. So we've got bookmarks for HTC here and the standard bookmarks for Android. If I hold this down, all I can do is move it around. I can't resize it, unfortunately. If I click on the standard bookmark for Android, I can resize it any way I like. Uh, a bit odd that you can't resize the widgets um, on the HTC app or the HTC widgets, uh, but the Android ones you can. Just something that struck me uh, as a bit unique. Uh, there are, however, a great selection of widgets uh, to choose from. You can see it doing some of its cool 3D stuff there. If you scroll through fast, it'll do a little twirl for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other widgets here. So you've got Agenda. Uh, if you've used Sense on an Android phone, a lot of these are going to look very familiar with, uh, to you. You can see just a ton of choices here. Clocks, widgets, pictures, friend streams, uh, and all kinds of stuff. I don't like that many widgets. Um, I do love some of the new mail widgets, though, um, that are pretty much stock Android. I didn't find myself using many uh, HTC widgets, except for this awesome clock and weather. Uh, I do, for whatever reason, uh, love that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this guy, uh, which is an optimal, optimal, optional stylus. So I'll pull my notes off to the side to make sure I cover everything. Uh, this is going to come at it at a cost. Some bundles might come with it, uh, some might not. About $60 to $80, depending on where you go. Uh, and it is a magnetic stylus that actually has powered. Uh, there's a battery in there. So let me show you what you can do with it. So let's go ahead and open up the notes application. And you can see that I'm tapping around here. We'll go ahead and go to new. And now I'm in a new note. So I can draw uh, if I'd like with my, there we go. I can pull up the keyboard. I can input what I want. Uh, you can draw with your finger as well. Let's go ahead and hit back. If I can hide this keyboard, at least figure out it at the keyboard. There we go. That'll get rid of it. And we've got this full tray here at the bottom. This sort of pops out of the corner. And this controls what the pen can do. And it's pressure sensitive. It can do a lot of stuff. So if you want to see, for example, Highlighter, pencil, you see different options there. If you hold it down, you can see what else comes up. Pen, if you push this down on the option there, you can choose different colors. You can choose the thickness of the ink or the pencil, depending on what you're using. Color, pretty handy for highlighting. So let's just use, a, let's go to pencil and we'll make it black, since that's what pencil should be. And as you draw or write, you can see it writes pretty quick. Um, but it's not as quick as your pen moves. So as you watch as I go across here, you notice it's not tracking exactly. There's a little bit of a lag. And if I move suddenly, which I'm going to right now, it takes a bit of a time to do, uh, which is tough when you're handwriting. So if we want to write, for example, testing, there's definitely a lag when using it. Um, you can highlight stuff. If you hold down the button, it'll let you highlight text uh, if you choose to do that. Uh, there are a lot of options for perhaps why artists would like this, and I think that they're really gearing towards students. You can sync these with Evernote, for example, if you wanted to draw some notes. Uh, but this is something that was much more gimmicky than actually useful. Uh, and that might be just tailored to my uses. Uh, if I'm taking notes on a tablet, I'm going to use a keyboard. Uh, this is just not conducive to me. If I want to take notes using a standard pen and paper, I'm going to use a standard pen and paper. Uh, but if you sketch and you draw, 
uh, this is going to be handy. I can particularly see this being useful uh, if you need to sign a contract, for example. You need something a little more uh, accurate than, say, your big fat finger if you need to sign. You know, this could be very helpful. So, you know, sign whatever you want to sign, and, you know, you can do that right there. So, if that's something that's important to you, this is an extra option, uh, and it works. So, this is a big tablet. Uh, this is not a little guy. Uh, weighing in at 1.5 pounds. If you look at, for example, and there's a reason I'm bringing this guy back, uh, this is the Galaxy Tab 10.1. With a relatively similar spec, there's a big difference in thickness and there's a big difference in weight. Uh, this is by no means uh, a little tablet. Uh, it's by no means a um, bad tablet either. Uh, the screen is very pretty, the resolution is great, images look solid, text is very easy to read. Uh, if you're zoomed in, you could very easily read an ebook on here without any sort of difficulty whatsoever. But that price, so you saw my notes creep in a little bit earlier. Let me go ahead and show you what I got here on my notes. Review a lot of tablets and phones, so I always want to make sure I'm getting everything right. But big fat frowny face here on that price. $700 for a tablet on contract is crazy. Even if you take out, you, do, you assume we live in a world uh, where an iPad's not an option, Android's what you want. You can pick up a Galaxy Tab 10.1 that I just showed you with LTE on Verizon, which is currently in 100 markets, uh, for $350. A Kindle Fire uh, for just about $200. Uh, T-Mobile's got some great tablets. Sprint's got some great tablets. I just cannot see dropping that much money uh, on a tablet here, no matter how good it is. Not to mention AT&T's LTE network. While very fast, we live in an area where it gets, um, where it exists, uh, it's not that prevalent yet. So presumably by the end of next year, uh, LTE will be in many, many more markets and this tablet will have a lot more utility. Uh, however, now it's really hard to recommend and I just can't get past that price. If this was, say, the same price, the Tab 10.1 or $50 less, I'd say it's a great buy. You're going to get some awesome specs, it's going to work well, HTC build quality, even if it is a little bit chunky, Sense works awesome on it, but it's just too expensive. Um, so this tablet, uh, you're definitely going to want to give a pass on, uh, and definitely take a look at the Tab 10.1, uh, which is arguably one of my favorite tablets uh, out on the market, and you can pick different sizes in that Tab family. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Do you agree, disagree? Uh, this has been my full review of the HTC Jetstream which is available now for AT&T Wireless. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to check us out for all of your latest tech news at, quite obviously, technobuffalo.com. All them links are down below.